Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Be aware, and so we talked about this morning, how we're to watch our words. Acronym for, for the word watch, watch your words, watch your actions, watch your thoughts, watch your company, and watch your heart. Amen. You know, and so we're, we're coming into that, uh, that, that time uh, of our walk with the Lord, we need to grow up, that it's not all about you. Somebody say, it's not, just say, it's not all about me. Thank you. It's just not all about you, and it's not all about me. It is about, what did Jesus say? How is it that you look for me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? So what does that mean? If we're to be imitators of him, if we're to follow after him, then we should be about what? The Father's business. Now, I, I, on one side, I understand the need to be healthy uh, in spiritual matters and, you know, have your soul restored and renewed. But I tell you, if we're, if we're waiting until we get completely whole to do anything, just forget it. I think one of the first steps, um, how many ever remember seeing the movie or maybe ever at least heard of uh, the movie, um, and did the book, I Am Third, the Brian Piccolo story coming out of Gail Sayers' book, I Am Third. And um, his acronym for joy was Jesus first, other second, and you are third. And, of course, then he wrote the book, I Am Third. You know, Gail Sayers uh, was, and Brian Piccolo were the running backs for the Chicago Bears. Brian Piccolo contracted cancer and died. And the journey that Gail Sears went through them, you know, they were, the, they were made as roommates, first, first black and white roommates on that team. And, you know, they, they had to the room together, and it was a big deal because, you know, you know they were integrating, and, and they became buddies, good, good, good friends. And then Brian Piccolo contracted cancer and eventually died, and uh, Gail Sears wrote that book. But he found out that the key to life is not you first. It's not even you second. It was Jesus first. Others second, and I am, and you are third, or I am third. Of course, obviously, when he's writing the first person, it became I am third. And so, uh, watch your words, watch your actions, watch your thoughts. Let's make sure that we're putting Jesus first, and you know, um, and and crown King of our hearts. Remember, the Bible does. Uh, if we if we were to teach the Word of God, I'm going to get there. I'm go, I'm heading there. But if we were to teach the Word of God the way we, sh we should teach it, when we get when people come to get the kingdom of God to get saved, we would stop really emphasizing getting saved from going to hell and emphasize submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible, Paul wrote to the church at Rome and said that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God's raising from the dead, you'll be saved. So it was, you know, it wasn't, confessing our sins, trying to go get forgiven and not go to hell, it was coming to a place that we yielded our complete life to the authority, the lordship of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people get saved with the mindset, I'm not going to hell, and they don't ever really want to submit to the lordship of Jesus. We got to submit to the lordship of Jesus. Bobblehead it. And, you know, since I'm in my office to get my bobblehead, I'll let Pastor Ed bobblehead Pastor Ed. Somebody came in my office one day and looked down and says, is that really a Pastor Ed bobblehead? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Bill. <laughs> and whoever else, they, they, well, if anybody else helped, thank you. But I know Bill was involved in that one, so thank you. Watch your thoughts. We finished with this morning. Watch your company. Who you hang out with does affect you. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Now, Jesus... I found something interesting. One of the things they said in the New Testament was that you know, the disciples were, um, they were tried and they were persecuted and being let go, they went into their own company. It's one thing to go minister to the world. See, this is where we got to get it right. Church, the world is not your fellowship. It's your mission field. Those people that you have relationships with in the world are not your buddies. They're your mission field. Amen. 
The believers are to be your buddies. That's your company. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. A two-fold cord, a three-fold cord is not easily broken. We need one another. And every time they got in trouble in the Bible and they got persecuted, things happened, they all ran back and got together and began to pray. They got with their company. So watch your company. Do not let your guard down and begin to think you can hang out with um, worldly people as, as a hanging out process. I get it if you're, if you're, if you're taking it as an opportunity as a mission field. And that doesn't mean you walk in there with your Bible and go, I am here to tell you you need to get saved. Or you're going to hell now. But you can't look to those people for your company. You can't look to those people for your counsel. You can't look to those people for your alibi. You, I mean, for your ally, you have to look to the company of believers for those things. Amen? Amen. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Think about it. The whole book of Psalms starts out with, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen? Um, Psalm 119, look over there. Around verse 63 or so. I'm still trying to break this Bible in. All these pages are stuck. That's all right, they'll get unstuck. <coughs> Glory to God. Listen to what the psalmist said here in Psalm 119, verse 63. I am a companion. What if you're a companion? What does that mean? You're keeping company with. I am a companion of all them that fear thee. You don't need to have buddies who hate God. You don't need to have buddies who don't believe the Bible's true. No, they're a mission field. I didn't say don't have any, I didn't say not have anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, the Bible does, tells us not to have, uh, the one place I can think of in the New Testament that tells you not to have company with people is with uh, believers who are not walking rightly. Yeah. Yeah. So we can have company with unbelievers, but you can't have fellowship with them. They have to be your mission field. In other words, you take the opportunity. You might, you might, they might, your neighbor might invite you over for dinner. I can't go over there. You're a sinner. No. It's an opportunity to be light in darkness. But I'm just saying is they can't be your best bud. Then when crisis of life, you don't call them up and say, what am I going to do? Well, I just think you ought to do such. And such. Well, they're, they're, they're the, that's the counsel of the ungodly. Are you here? Uh, the psalmist here says, I am a companion of them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. I've been amazed. No, I haven't been amazed. I have been disconcerted, there we go, by people in the church who come to a certain place, and then they want to go back and hang out with their old buddies who aren't Christians and go do all kinds of things with them, not as ministry, but it's just because they enjoy being with them, because they, they had a previous relationship. You can't do that. You just can't go hang out with people. You just can't go hang out with the world. I mean, it's, it's, this isn't like you, you better not ever go. I'm talking about but this is, you know, who you keep your company with. You all get the difference. Why? Because if you let down them and they stop being your mission field, then you'll begin to acclimate to, the, to the, where the relationship is. You'll begin to drop your guard. You'll begin to become, you know, well, yeah, I can see why you think that or whatever. It doesn't matter if you can see why they think or not. We're called to preach the gospel. Did you know you're not called to reason out with people and get them to, and get them to figure out you're right? You're called to preach the gospel. So with those outside the church, they are mission field. They are always a mission field. They will always be a mission field. And you've got to keep that perspective right. And I've heard people say, I'd rather hang out with sinners than hang out with church folk. That, watch it. That's a statement that can lead you into a, to a difficult place. Well, I'm going to go hang out with my buddies. We're going to go drink some long necks, you know, and, you know, uh, 
you know, I kind of find they're pretty cool people, you know, and, and uh, they don't mind me loving the Lord. We'll just sit down and we'll, talk, we'll, get, we'll drink and get about half lit. Maybe talk about the Lord there somewhere. And it's, it's not going to be godly. So what do we do? The psalmist said, I'm going to keep my company, or I'm going to be a companion of them that fear God, and keep, not just fear God, keep his precepts. And if they keep his precepts, what's that mean? The doers of the word. Amen. Somebody shout glory. He that walketh with wise, uh, Proverbs um, 13, 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I tell you, I'd say it's, it's a pretty good thing to watch out who you hang out with. Why? Well, if they're fools, you're going to get destroyed. Yeah, they have this mindset now, you know, even in court systems, you know, if, if a group of people become a mob, then the individuals aren't responsible for their actions because it became a mob thing. It became a, it be, that, that mob became an entity of itself. You know, that's lunatic judging, but, you know, we've got some lunatics on the bench. And um, you've know, got crazy people on the bench. You can have to tell how crazy it was. I just saw a, a report the other day. A federal judge is envisioning the day that there will be a license for people to rape. And he sits on the bench. That should be cause for impeachment just by making that statement. Because he's nuts. And they're sitting on the bench of America. They're sitting on the federal courts of America. <clears throat> we got people in the Supreme Court who believe that we should in, use foreign law to, uh, to make decisions on our law. No, we use our Constitution. Yes. Why are they on our bench? That should be impeached for even saying that. Yes, people are crazy. Are you here? And so if you walk with fools, you're going to lead to destruction. We don't want to walk with fools. Now, what does it mean walk with fools? It means you go hang out, pal around, do stuff with them. They do stupid stuff. How many of you ever got in trouble when you were younger because you didn't do anything but you were with the person who did something? Yep. We all probably did that. Hello? Uh, I mean, I got relatives who did things like set the school on fire and they burned their textbooks and then, and then told the teacher that they were, they were trying to use the, the match to get their big pen to write and they flipped it over their shoulder and went down the hole in the floor and caught it on fire in there. Yeah. Same one got caught throwing their textbooks into the school incinerator. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it wasn't me. Older. Loving. <laughs> he, he did some stuff. <clears throat> well, him and, him and, him and uh, Kinlaw, the, the Warren, I think, Bloren, got in trouble because they were doing it. He, he, he was, he's the one that did it, but they, they were together, so they both got in trouble. Don't hang around with fools. Don't hang around, fools. You'll, you'll get up in destruction. Hello. Are you here? You're going home. Um, blessed are men when they shall hate you. They, and listen. Listen to this. Now, how do we get the mantras in the church that we get and the ideas in the church that we get when the Bible says things like this? All right? You know, if we just love people, they'll come into the kingdom. And, you know, we just walk in love. We show this love, this sloppy agape. We don't ever make them feel bad. We don't ever tell them they're doing wrong. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast your name out as evil for the Son of Man's sake. We think if we walk in love toward everybody, they're going to love us. Now, the world, the new definition of walking in love is not really biblical walking in love. It's dumb, dumb walking in love. It's, it's, it's compromising. Jesus did stuff. You know, when Jesus took the money changers and ran them out of the temple, he was walking in love. Yeah, they were violating God's word and he ran them out. Well, judgment could come if he didn't. Amen. He did all kinds of stuff, you know, that, I mean, now, some people come along and say, well, you're, they're misunderstood what they're doing over there. Let's just love on them. Don't stop selling and, and cheating the people. No, Jesus ran them out. It was love. I mean, it was a firm love. It was a disciplining love. But it was still the love of God. Because why? He is love. So it had to be love that motivated him. His anger was love motivated. 
Because they were approaching them. First of all, we love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and strength. He, him first. Amen. We don't love people at the expense of our love for the Father. So that means we don't keep company. Or we don't commune and companion with people in the sense of they are our fellowship. Because you, there ain't no Christians I like being around. You, maybe you need to grow some. Church, again, it's not all about you. See, some folks think if they can't find people in the church that they, they like being around and they just they got the same interests and all this stuff, you know, that they, that they, they just go over hang, hang around with sinners. How about it, the fact you're supposed to be a supplier in the church and not a taker? Some people are supposed to be, are supposed to be far, along, far enough along in the Lord that they've become suppliers in the church instead of takers. And you may not have people in there that, you, that, that are your cup of tea. They like the same things that you like. They want to do the same. Maybe, maybe they don't want to ride a Harley. I don't. Why? Because I, I tend to be a little clumsy. If I get a motorcycle, it's going to be a three-wheel one. I'm just telling you, I might put safety wells on that. You know, I mean, last, uh, Jamie and I were one time, we were, we were early when we got married, before we had kids, um, we had 10 speed bikes, we, and we lived about a half a mile from East Carolina's uh, central campus, maybe a mile, and uh, we'd ride our bikes over to the campus, and ride all over the campus, the, the, the old part of that campus is really pretty, um, really, really pretty, and uh, we were riding back from that part of campus, going back to the house, and we were riding, we were riding on, a, on a kind of a in a gravel trail that was kind of a mulchy trail. And we're just riding along. I'm, I'm on my bike, and I'm, she's on hers, and we're coming up, you know, to an area. And, and, and I'm just looking here, talking to her. And next thing I know, I go, whoa! <laughs> now, after she gets up, she fell. Because <clears throat> she's down on the ground laughing like a hyena. I look up ahead, and there's an opening. They had put timbers, you know, on the landscaping. And, and, the, and the path went through the timbers. And I wasn't paying attention, and she went right through the hole. I ran into the timber. Well, they were, they were six by six. They were like railroad timbers. My wheel didn't go over it. It, it locked the front wheel up, and it just, it was a phallum. <laughs> Ejected me over the front, right over top. Hence, motorcycle is probably not a good idea for me. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. <clears throat> she'll, she'll still laugh about it today. Hallelujah. <clears throat> How did I get off on that? Anybody know? Right, yeah, having the same interest. You may, you may not be a motorcycle person. You may not be. I mean, you come in here, maybe you got too many computer people in here. You don't like computers anyway. But what about if your God called you as a supplier? It's always got to be about us. Does it? Does it really? What about if it's just about the kingdom? We build relationships so we can work together for the Father. Amen? So we can get the work done for the Father. So I say glory. Amen? <clears throat> our agreement then needs to come. It says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Now, i be honest with you. That don't mean we see everything eye to eye, out, every jot and every tittle on, on, on the word of God, that every single thing we absolutely perfectly agree. So, Brother Hagin talked about this. He said it's, the, it's, it's unity of spirit about the things of God. We have the same heart, the same purpose for the things. You may not agree on everything. You might think the church started the day Jesus breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. You might think it started on the day the Pentecost came. The day of Pentecost came, and the Holy Ghost came into the upper room. And we're going to have a falling out over that. You know, I'm going to go hang out with some sinners and drink beer because we don't agree all on everything in the church. We get more agreement out there. Now you just listen to the devil. Those, listen, people that are not your company are your mission field. And if they're not your mission field, they are a danger to your walk with the Lord. And you need to keep and understand your place so that you can be effective. Do not let what God intended for you to be as a place of ministry.
become a stumbling block to you because you allowed that relationship to become something that it wasn't supposed to be. We will get all, I tell you, we're going to have the whole church get bobbleheads. And we'll put them on the seat and we'll put vibrators on them. And when you don't do anything, I'll just press the button there. All right. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness and unrighteousness and communion hath light with darkness. Next, and we're going, we're going yeah, praise the Lord, watch your heart. Keep thy heart, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 4, 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. This may be one of the most important, one, I guess these are all important, but keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. We have to guard our heart. We have to watch over our heart. I have seen more people walk down the path of destruction and walk out of the plan and the will of God because they didn't watch their heart. They let attitudes get in there. They let um, resentment come in. They let bitterness enter in. They let different things enter into their heart, and it drove them. And, and then it skewed their perception of things. See, if you are determined to see something a certain way because you've let something in your heart, you'll see it that way no matter what happens. Amen. If you decide, you know, I remember Buddy Harrison saying one time, he said he had gone to work on a loading dock, you know, and <clears throat> he'd been working there, and they, they hired a new foreman. And he had decided before the guy ever got there, he was a turkey. Maybe a jive turkey, but a turkey. He said the guy walked out there, and, the, and I mean, the guy just walked out on the platform the first day, and he said, that's a turkey if I've ever seen. Well, hadn't he talked to the guy? When you make a, see, we've got to guard our heart. When you make a determination in your heart about something, and it's, and it's motivated by bitterness or anger or whatever, you, you, you'll get yourself in trouble. And when you, make, when you let things into your heart that you shouldn't let in your heart, it begins to skew your reality. See, out of the heart of the issues of life, what we should have is the word of God and the right attitudes and the right character and the right things coming out of our heart. Why? So that we have a godly perspective of life, but when we let other things in, we get a skewed perspective of life. So we have to watch our heart. We have to guard our heart. We have to look into our heart and say, no, I can't see it this way. I have to see it the way the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 19, 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. You can get all kinds of junk in your heart. I've had people sit in my office before and tell me stuff, and I'm sitting there kind of going, what are you talking about? And I knew it is because they allow things in their heart they shouldn't, and it skewed their reality. So they couldn't, you couldn't have counseled them and talked to them and tried to talk to them and, and let them see that they were wrong uh, for 10,000 years. Why? Because their heart had been skewed, and they saw everything through that prism, and they weren't going to see it any other way. Hello? You know, some people may say, well, Pastor Ed didn't fight for me. There was no need, not, not that way. No need to argue about it, no need to talk about it. You'd already, you'd already got your heart over there. It was going to take the prayer and let the Holy Ghost deal with it. I couldn't fix it because we did not watch. We, we have to watch our heart. Watch your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Um, many devices in your heart. We've got to let the counsel of the Lord stand. Can you say Amen. For where your treasure, Jesus said this, where, just Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Woo! Everybody say, ouch! Because where you put your treasure, there's where your heart's going to be. What you deem most valuable, that's where your heart's going. Again, in relationships, when you deem your personal feelings, now listen, I, I don't believe in unhealthy relationships. I don't believe that it's right for you to get beat. I don't believe you keep subjecting yourself to somebody that abuses you all the time, verbally or whatever. But that aside, a lot of stuff is just because you perceived it that way because you didn't keep your heart watched. Or you had your treasure somewhere. If you make you the treasure of your heart, that's where your heart's going, and you're going to make sure you're, take, 
You're always right. You're always this. You're always that. Why? Because you've placed you as your treasure. What did, what did Paul write to the church at Colossae? Set your affections on things above and not on the earth. What? What's your affections? That's where your treasure is. Set your affections. Set your treasure. What did, he, what did Jesus say? Store up treasures. Help me out here. Where? In heaven. Where the moth does not enter in and the and corrupt. And moth and rust doesn't enter in. There we go. Thank you there. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where the thieves do not break through nor steal. See, we gotta have a, a, we got to have a heart that has established our treasure in the things of God and not on what's in it for me. Because if you put it into what's in it for me, then your heart will go there. And out of your heart's the issues of life. And you'll begin to do things and skew, uh, skew reality and act in ways that are in your best interest. Let me say this. God's ways are already in your best interest. You follow after God, he's going to lead you into his, your best interest. Amen? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He goes on and says, Thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. You lead me by the still waters and the green pastures, glory to God. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. You got three angels following you around. Surely goodness and mercy. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's old one. That's not new. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. When you make, remember we talked about this the other week, until Jesus is the king of your heart and you're not on the king of your heart, you're not going to be satisfied. And when you make you the treasure of your heart, then your heart will be there and then you will perceive everything in a way that's to your benefit. And everything has to be to your benefit. There's never a sacrifice on your part. And that's not Bible. As a matter of fact, it's, not, it's, just, it's just ungodly. Because our heart's supposed to be on the things of God. And that means we're going to sacrifice things that are for us. Now, Jesus, didn't, Jesus said this, you won't sacrifice anything for my name's sake that you won't get a hundredfold return of this life. He's going to multiply it back to you when you genuinely have set your heart on the things of heaven, set your treasure in heaven, your heart's on that, and you may give up things. He's going to take care of you. And you don't put your heart on the things of God so that he will bring treasure return. But he said when you do, that, will, that is what will happen. We had to watch our, got to watch our attitudes. It's so easy to walk in, you know, to come in and say, Pastor Ed didn't do this for me this week. You know, what's that song? Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. The devil will supply them if from church will stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Well, the sermons are too short, they're too long, sheets too hard, they're too soft. You know, it goes on list all these excuses. And one of them is the old, the old sister comes back and goes, well, he didn't even shake my hand. Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. How many ever heard that song? Come on, I know, Brother Bill, you heard it. You didn't hear excuses? Oh, you heard it from me. Go look it up on the internet. It'll bless your socks off. <laughs> or it might even make you take your socks off so you can get, go while take a bath and get cleaned up from it. Anyway, but it's true. When, when our perspective is skewed, and that's why we have to watch our heart. Because out of that heart come the issues of life. And we want them pure. We want them cleansed. We want them tried by the fire of God's presence. So that the direction, the leading we're getting out of our heart is pure by God. Amen. Now, people get offended. Get offended over the stupidest stuff. Hello? Hello? I've had people tell me stuff sometimes. I'm, 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 my mouth just got, it must hit the floor because I'm thinking, you got offended over that? Or they make up offense. They become offended about something that didn't even happen. 
or didn't happen the way they said it happened, but they perceived it that way. Why? They were not watching their heart. Hello? Watch your heart. Amen? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart will bring forth that which is evil. Hallelujah. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Man, what you're storing up is going to come out. That's why you got to watch it. I said, that's why you got to watch it. Because Janice is de double preaching. Jerry got the double dose. I'm over here preaching, and she's repeating it right to Jerry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's why it's so important to watch what you're letting in. Why? Because your words govern your life. Amen. Now, this is a little simpler than we would if we're doing a teaching on that or something. But, you know, it's because, because of the nature of the sermon, but that's okay. You can go home and get some stuff out of this. Watch your heart. But watch your words. Watch your actions. Watch your thoughts. Watch your company. Watch your heart. I've, I've, uh, it's funny. I guess funny is not right, but it, it, I don't want to say disconcerting again, but it's bothersome when people allow things into the heart that drive them away from God's plan for their life. And it's all because they let stuff in their heart they shouldn't have let in there. They didn't watch. Let me say something. Does that mean that people won't do things that, that bother us? Nope. Does that mean people won't do things that we, you could have a legitimate gripe about? Nope. Watch your heart. Just like I wrote about the Osteens the other week where I talked about how that, you know, I disagreed vehemently with her statement. That's probably, it's an egregious, erroneously erroneous statement. Egregiously erroneous. But you know what? My job is to judge what was said, not them, right. and, and attack them and say all kinds of names about them. Hello? My job is to judge what was said and then deal with it and then, if, you know, and pray for them. They're still part of the body of Christ. Amen. I can't let things in my heart about them because she said something stupid. Right. And that's probably that's all I can say was stupid. Okay? I can't let things in my heart towards them as an individual and drive me till I become angry towards them and hate them. You know? No. Nope. Love them. Disagree, but love them. Pray for them. God opened their eyes. Let the spirit of wisdom and understanding be in them. But see, some people don't want other people to get right because then they, then they can continue to succeed. You don't let your heart get there. Keep your heart right. Can you say amen? And bless those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Amen? All right, did y'all enjoy this? I mean, that's a good, that, that's a good little acronym, isn't it? You know, and uh, you can look up all those scriptures, but, you know, watch your words, watch your actions, watch your thoughts, watch your company. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.